Uh, welcome back. This is the second aspect of our video on derived quantities and dimensional analysis. My name is Olajide Abdurazak. So we're going to continue from where we stopped. So these are the content for the second segment of this video. So now derived physical quantities. In our previous video, I've explained physical quantity fundamental quantity i explain what dimension is and I explain what dimensional analysis i gave illustration on dimension so now we're going to continue from derived physical quantities so what are derived physical quantities they are the quantities whose definitions are based on other physical quantities I repeat, they are the quantities whose definitions are based on other physical quantities. So, in a nutshell, derived physical quantities from the word derived means they derive it from the other physical quantities. So, now these are the examples of derived physical quantities. We have pressure, we have speed, we have young, young modulus, and so on and so forth. So, now we have other examples of derived quantities which are labeled on the table so now we have the symbols for the derived quantity we have formula we have derived units so now if you look at all these derived quantities you know from the word derived so they derive them from certain formula for example now area is being derived which is length multiplied by a by breadth so unlike time so it's not it's not derived they are fundamental so now let's move on to units so what do we call units so now unit is the reference used as this, as the standard measurement of a physical quantity so the units in which the fundamental quantities are measured are called fundamental units and the units used to measure derived quantities are called derived units so for every fundamental quantities we have fundamental units and for every derived quantities we have derived units so now the system of units is very important in our day-to-day -day activities especially when you are when you are a scientist so the system of units we use is very important so these are four types of system of unit that we have but the the word accepted one that we are currently using now is si unit which is the international system of units so and it is universally accepted and has seven fundamental units so which i've mentioned earlier so now let's try to look at law of dimensional analysis also known as principle of homogeneity so now what does dimensional analysis law explain to us so law of dimensional analysis states that the equation is dimensionally correct if the dimensions on the left hand side of the equations are equal to the dimension of the right hand side of the equation so if not equation is not dimensionally correct so what does the the law is trying to explain to us so let, let's try to check the results here so now looking at the equation where we have v is equal to 1 all over 2 g raised to power 2 so using dimensional analysis using l t and m so we're going to realize v has to do with distance all over time which is our velocity and distance is measured in length so which means we're going to represent our distance with l and time will be represented as t 
t so now for v which is is on our left hand side we're going to have l all over t so now which is equal to we have one all over two g h squared so when we're talking about g we're talking about the, the gravity and h will symbolize the height so now we're talking about the distance and for our g we're going to have l all over t squared so which is almost the same thing as you know when we have the acceleration we have velocity all over time so now g will also represent that so now we have the distance all over t squared and our h squared represent the l squared so now simplifying this we're going to have l multiplied by l square which 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 is going to give us l raised to the power 3 divided by t squared so if you look at what we have on the left hand side and what we have on the right hand side of the equation so we realize what we have the terms do not match so now looking at the second equation where we have v is equal to the square root of g h so as you know velocity is distance all over time which is l all over t is equal to the square root of l all over t square which is our g and h which is l squared so in that we have h squared so now if we simplify further by taking the square of that one so we're going to have l all over t from our left hand side is equal to l all over t which means times match and the formula we have could be a valid formula so now that's what the law is trying to tell us that is law of dim dimensional analysis state that the equation is dimensionally correct if the dimensions on the left hand side of the equations are equal to the dimensions on the right hand side of the equation but if not the equation is not dimensionally correct so now this is one of the uses of dimensional analysis now we have the summary and we also have the assignment so let's try to check for these equations below using the dimension as i've explained in the checking of the result so thank you once again for watching this video and don't forget to like and share goodbye